The History of Political Party, Part 2. In 1980, Republican President Reagan gave us the supply side economics. The book says it is called Voodoo Economics. Why is it Voodoo? Because it gives the illusion that we cut our taxes and still continue to pay the government expenses by borrowing money. Remember, you cut the tax, you still pay the government expenses. How? By borrowing money. That's the only way to pay for the government expenses. And this is the same as we, our own individual homes, we have a pay cut and you, yet we still continue to pay our bills. And how do we pay our bills, our surmounting bills when we have a pay cut? We can only do that if we borrow using credit cards. So what happens when we use our credit cards with less money, less income? Our bills, our debt will be higher. Point number four, because of 1971, the government was printing money. Gold was taken off as the standard. President Reagan supply side economics. Because of the supply side economics, the national debt was exploding in the USA. The end of President Reagan's term, the federal debt was $2.6 trillion. Point number five, President Reagan, Vice President, first George Bush in the White House, realized that the national debt was exploding because of the loss of revenue. There's no more money coming in. So why was there loss of revenue? Because of fake taxes cuts. So what he did was he ran for president and he promised that there's no new taxes. So he won. Now, Republican President George Bush, when he was elected after he won the election, he raised the taxes. And what happens then? He was never not reelected because he said there was not gonna be new taxes, but when he was in the office, he raised the taxes, so he was not reelected. Point number seven, the Democratic President Clinton claimed that he balanced the budget and there was no increase in the national debt. He balanced the budget by counting the money from the Social Security and counting the money from Medicare as income. So instead of the money going to the social security, to the trust, the money was spent. So President Clinton admitted that there was no social security trust fund. And therefore Medicare began operating in the red. The expenses were greater than income. Second President George Bush term, the Federal Reserve Bank cut the interest rate and it flooded the world with funny money. And we all experienced this. So when that happened, it led to subprime crisis of 2007 and 2010. So let me tell you a story because I was here in the USA in 2004 as a tourist and I work as a resident physician from 2005 to 2008. I then bought with my husband our first primary home, which is a condo. In 2008, the homes were selling for 500,000 for a two bedroom, two bath condominium. When we decided to purchase it late in 2008 to 2009, the, the condominium that was selling for to 500,000 was now selling for $325,000. So that resulted to this crisis. 
the subprime crisis of 2007 and 2010. So this happened because the Federal Reserve Bank, they cut the interest rate. At that point in time, my interest rate was around 3% for a 15 year fixed loan. It was very low. And they flooded the world with funny money. What does that mean? People, so when you buy properties here in America, the bank checks your credit score. They check to see if you're able to pay for all these mortgages. If you're able to pay one property, two properties. So they ask for your W-2. They ask for your tax return over the last three years. They ask for your pay stuff for the last three months. Because the lending was loose back then, and there was a lot of money coming from the Federal Reserve Bank, which flooded the world with funny money. So the lending was loose, and people who were not able to afford two, three, four, five properties, the bank would easily loan to them without checking their records. So that led to the subprime prices. So even if I was paying my mortgage diligently every month without any miss, but because of the crisis, there is nothing I can do. The crisis led to people filing for foreclosure. The crisis led to people filing for bankruptcy. So you would see back then in 2008, 2009, 2010, Houses everywhere was under foreclosures. The contractors were demolishing brand new homes. Why? Because there was a, they were a liability. They were destroying it. <laughs> there was so much downtime in the history of properties. My property tanked a lot by a half, even if I was paying for my mortgage every month. Because everywhere I look, everywhere I go, the properties were in foreclosure. The property was in bankruptcy. The owner was in bankruptcy. So you can buy cheap during the 2007-2010 subprime crisis. And if you look today, if you bring it to today's world, during the COVID, the interest rate right now, well, before COVID and during COVID, the interest rate was low or is low. You can borrow from 2 to 3% for a first-time home buyer. Now the Fed rate just slowly increases it. And we've had several increases already. Last Tuesday, the Federal, uh, the Federal Reserve, they increased the rate by 50 basis points again after increasing it a couple of weeks back. So now they're increasing the rate from 3 before before January to now you can see to as high as 5% for a first time home buyer. And number two, during COVID, the government flooded the economy with money. There was a lot of money being printed to help people who were staying in their home and instructed not to work. So they were flooding the world again with funny money. So if you see this, this is a history in repeat. Now, now the, the government, our government just slowly increased the interest rate. They cannot lower it. They cannot keep it at a low rate. Why? Because if something happens again, another crisis happens again, the rate is one of the things that they can control off. They can reduce the rate to stimulate the businessmen, the entrepreneurs to borrow money and grow and stimulate the economy. So they are trying to prevent the, another crisis from happening. How? By increasing our interest rate. Because if it's low now and another crisis happens, it's already at zero. There's nothing that they can do. But if they slowly, when I say they, our government, the Federal Reserve, if they slowly increase the rate, and something happens, God forbid, another crisis happens, then what the Federal Reserve do is not only print the money, but they can also decrease, cut back on the interest rates. So when the interest rate is low, then businesses, entrepreneurs borrow more money. Why? Because they want to help stimulate the economy. They can provide jobs. When, when the interest rate is low, there are more risk takers. 
they can grow their businesses. 